First member who will avail of the privilege hour is the gentleman from Partilis Bayan Muna, the Honorable Mary Colmenares. I move that he be recognized. The Honorable Mary Colmenares is hereby recognized to deliver his privilege speech. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Speaker. Today, I rise as a matter of privilege, Mr. Speaker, to discuss an issue which has a very huge implication uh, on Congress itself. Last week, the Supreme Court made an earth-shaking decision that may have deep-seated implications on Congress. And that is the decision of the Supreme Court declaring as unconstitutional PIDAC or other similar lump sum items. Ang tanong po naman namin, Mr. Speaker, is this. Was that decision really earth-shaking? Will it really change the way government is run? Will that decision eliminate graft and corruption? And in some, Mr. Speaker, Will that decision elim eliminate the pork barrel system? Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the answer is no. If you look at the decision of the Supreme Court, Mr. Speaker, the first reason given by the Supreme Court for invalidating PIDAF is invalid delegation of power, wherein lump sum item daw po yan, binibigay sa congressman at sa senador yung 70 million at 100 million, it is as if the individual congressman, sabi ng Korte Suprema, or senator, is making his or her own budget or appropriations by selecting the projects with which that lump sum amount should be spent. Therefore, sabi ng Korte Suprema, it is an invalid delegation dahil ang kongreso ang binigyan ng konstitusyon ng poder para mag-appropriate. Kongreso as an institution and not an individual member of Congress. PIDAF therefore, said the Supreme Court, is as if the individual congressman or senator is granted the power to make or approve his own General Appropriations Act with his or her 70 million or 200 million per year. Congress cannot delegate such power to an individual, therefore, it is an invalid delegation of power. The second reason of the Supreme Court in that decision is it also, or PIDAF, violates the separation of power clause. The Supreme Court said, Congress has the power to legislate the President has the power to execute the laws approved by Congress. But when members of Congress intervene in the execution or implementation of a law, Congress has transgressed the canalized division between legislative and executive. Because Congress cannot and should not be involved in the execution of laws, but only in the legislation or approval of laws. In the same manner that the President cannot legislate, so can Congress not perform an executive function. That is the second reason of the Supreme Court. The third basis of the Supreme Court, Mr. Speaker, is the violation of the doctrine of presentment. What is presentment? That a law must be presented to the President in such a way that the President would know which item he will approve and which item he will veto. In the case of the PIDAF, Mr. Uh, Speaker, the Supreme Court said, because it is a lump sum amount for each individual, congressman and senator, then there is no way for the President to veto a certain item in that lump sum amount. 70 million yan, 200 million. I wouldn't even know if that whole 200 million will be spent on beautification, which the President may want to veto. Because, sabi ng Supreme Court, for failure of presentment, the President cannot specifically know which items to approve or veto, then that is a violation of the Constitution. Ang tanong po namin kay ganito, 
Bakit sa Kongreso nakatuon lang ang desisyon na yon ng Korte Suprema? Bakit hindi ba siya applicable sa Presidente? Ang sabi namin, even if we eliminate the PDAF today, as long as presidential court continues to exist, there will be the same graft and corruption and patronage politics that will exist under that system. The struggle cannot be completed, the battle against the pork barrel system cannot be completed without the complete slaying of the bigger pork, the presidential pork. Now let us go, Mr. Speaker, doon sa desisyon ng Korte Suprema. Ang unang sinabi ng Korte Suprema, invalid delegation, dahil lamsam ang binigay sa Congressman at Senador, parang siya na ang gumagawa ng kanyang sariling budget. Pero hindi po ba, pag mag-submit ang Presidente ng budget dito at may 932 billion pesos na nakalagay na lamsam sa budget na yan, at inaprubahan natin yung budget po na yan, in the end, similar to the congressmen and the senators, the President is also exercising invalid appropriation powers. Hindi ba kapareho lang naman ng PIDAF ang gagawin ng Presidente when he can choose saan dadali ng pera, anong proyekto yan, sinong beneficiary dahil lamsam yan. Hindi po ba invalid delegation ng power ng Kongreso ang nasa Presidente na parang gumawa siya ng sarili niyang gaa dahil sa napakalaking lamsam? Yun po ang isang katanungan namin sa Korte Suprema kung maging consistent ang Korte Suprema sa desisyon niya. Pangalawa po, separation of powers. Bawal daw ang kongresista at senador makialam sa execution ng batas. Pero dahil lamsam po ang budget ng Presidente, at Presidente mismo ang gumagawa ng sarili niyang GAA, ng sarili niyang General Appropriations Act. Idagdag mo pa ang, ang DAP na kung saan matapos sabihin ng Kongreso na sa buong taon ito yung appropriations ng mga items na ito, limang bilyon halimbawa para sa pagtayo ng school building sa DepEd, in the middle of the year, iwi-withdraw ni Presidente Aquino ang 3 billion dahil underspending daw, iwaldas niya sa ibang items. Is that not a an act or a power of general appropriations? So in this case, Mr. Speaker, the president himself is also legislating. He is also similar to members of Congress doing his own gaa without the approval of Congress. Isn't that also a violation of the separation of powers? Ang tingin po namin, yes. Because hindi Kongreso ang naggaa noon. Presidente ang naggaa doon. Ano po ang pangatlong sinabi ng Korte Suprema? Presentment. Hindi alam ni Presidente Aquino saan ang item na ibibito niya, saan ang i-approve niya kasi lamsam daw ang pida. Tanong, 932 billion pesos at least of lamsam, hindi po ba sa Presidente yan under the budget? Hindi po ba na violation din yan similarly ng presentment doctrine kasi nung isinabmit ng presidente ang kanyang budget dito, ni hindi rin alam ng kongresong ito ano ang inaaprubahan niya, ano ang hindi niya inaaprubahan. So, kung sa tingin natin, if PIDAF can be struck down for invalid legislation, so can presidential court be struck down for invalid Uh, delegation of powers. If PIDAF can be struck down for violation of the separation of powers clause because the President is exercising legislative powers himself by approving the General Appropriations Act of his own, then he is also violating the separation of powers clause. Because of the if presentment can be used as a violation in the PIDAP issue, then presentment is also an issue on the part of the President. Hindi itemize yung ga. How can Congress find out whether they are approving or disapproving a certain project with wisdom? So similarly po, ang sabi namin, the Supreme Court decision is not earth-shaking after all because presidential court was untouched. Presidential court, except for that portion in Malampaya Fund, 
and portion in the Presidential Social Fund is still the same. Worse, that decision makes the President a very powerful public official in the country, considering that now he is the only one with such a huge amount of pork barrel that he can dispose of for largesse and for patronage politics. Yun po ang implikasyon ng desisyon ng Korte Suprema, kaya may nagsasabi dyan, this decision of the Supreme Court may be a good development, however, as long as presidential uh, pork continues to exist, then that decision will actually make matters worse. Pangalawa po, hindi lang ang desisyon na yun. Kung hahayaan natin ang presidential pork na mag-exist, hindi lang ang desisyon na yun ang mag-concentrate ng power sa executive. But that, the continued existence of presidential pork is a violation in itself of that very decision of the Supreme Court for the reasons I just mentioned a while ago. Ngayon po, Yolanda ang nangyari. Nandun po kami sa Samar at Leyte nitong nakaraang araw at grabe talaga ang devastation. Ang calamity fund, marami niyan. Sobra-sobra ang sabi ng mga tao, distribution ang problema. Ang rehabilitation ng mga calamity-stricken victims at calamity-stricken areas sa Leyte, sa Samar, sa Cebu, sa Negro, sa Iloilo, sa Kapi, sa Aklan at iba pa, at iba pa ang mga calamity-stricken areas, huwag lang po focus sa Yolanda, yung mga uh, calamity-stricken areas sa Lindol sa Bohol, sa Santi, sa, sa Sendong, at iba pang sa Pablo, at iba pang malalaking kalamidad. Dapat po meron ding rehabilitation yan. At sangayon din kami sa bayan muna na ang paraan dyan is a supplemental budget. Supplemental budget po, but this is our demand. That supplemental budget must be itemized. We cannot allow the President, which has already 932 billion pesos in pork, to have additional pork to dispense with nitong mga panahong ito. Hindi po ba ma-predict ni President Aquino ilang iskwelahan ang dapat ipagtayo? Tayo na ata at ang gobyerno natin ang pinaka-expert sa kalamiti, sa kalamidad. Tayo na ata at ang gobyerno dapat ang pinaka-expert in relief. Tayo na dapat at ang gobyerno natin ang pinaka-expert in rehabilitation. Sabi nga ng NEDA, last week nabasa ko, there is now an itemized plan to rehabilitate. It will be out in two weeks. Kaya ni Presidente Aquino ma-pinpoint sa ang kalsada ang kailangan gawin, sa ang eskwelahan, sa ang ospital, ang kailangan ipatayo o i-repair, at hindi pwedeng maging lump sum ang, ang ating supplemental budget. Because if there is lump sum again in the supplemental budget, Mr. Speaker, be afraid, be very, very afraid. Lump sum is anathema to correct budget processes and is really, really vulnerable to graft and corruption, if not patronage politics. So, Mr. Speaker, yung punto namin, kung bawal pala sa Kongreso, sa mga senador at congressman, dapat, kung consistent ang Korte Suprema, it should be clear in the current the petition and all other decisions of the Supreme Court that the presidential court must also cease to exist and must be declared unconstitutional. Ngayon, ang PIDAP po ay tinanggal nila. Pero paghayaan natin ang budget process, ang supplemental budget, lang sam pa rin. Parang binisa na natin ang ating sarili sa sarili nating mantika. Tayo ang pinupukusan ng desisyon ng Korte Suprema. Tama para sa amin sa bayan muna, pero it must be applicable to all. And the President's Court must also be declared unconstitutional. Para sa atin sa Kongreso, we must demand from the President that for Congress to exercise its constitutional power over the purse, then the President must submit a supplemental budget if necessary sa rehabilitation ng lahat ng mga calamity-stricken areas.
We ask the President to also respect Congress and the power of presentment and the power of appropriations by telling Congress saan pupunta ang pondong inaaprubahan nyo. Para tayong tinitreat na bata po, paglamsam lang kasi hindi nyo naman alam kung saan dad, paano dalhin yan, paano gawin yan. I-approve nyo na lang ang lamsam, ako na bahala. Hindi po. That is not the way the Constitution wants it and that budget must be supplemental. And we in Congress, that we have to approve the budget that we know of. Na may wisdom tayo in saying this should be approved and this should be disapproved. That way, Mr. Speaker, we are taking back, taking back the real power of the purse. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon po sa inyo.